essentially turn this into a business and solve this problem that we see right in front of us, which is you know, power resilience in sort of developing parts of the world. Having the customer's eyes sort of light up and say, you know, where have you been all this while? That's sort of what really sort of continues uh, to drive me as an individual. Brandon, I'm really curious. I know you mentioned that you got married last year, and I'm curious how you met your wife and that story behind that. Wow. Um, so I was in London, uh, just graduated from university, and uh, I was sharing a flat with uh, one of my old uh, roommates from university. And we just, you know, we both of us just started work, uh, so we just moved into this new flat. And he's originally from Hong Kong, and he had the opportunity to relocate and actually set up the same team that he was working for at the time here in Hong Kong. He obviously took the chance, so he's now here in Hong Kong. He's still very good for. He was my he's my best man actually in my wedding. Um, so I needed to find a new roommate um, to share the rent with, and um, I uh, just posted up an ad, and someone responded to that ad, and it was a girl, I was like, okay, that's cool. Uh, so it was her time to move in, and she, uh, she uh, on moving in date, she brought a friend along to help out with that, and, uh, and, and that friend, uh, you know, I kind of you know, fell in love with, and it's kind of love at first sight for me, and uh, you know, our, our romance blossomed, and I decided to, to propose to my now wife uh, when it was on a junk boat here in Hong Kong, uh, which we rented out uh, with a couple of friends uh, on the uh, 29th of July 27, uh, 2016, and we got married on the 29th of July 2017. So yeah, that's how I ended up meeting my wife and how we ended up getting married. Wow. <laughs> I think we that. What a cool story. Um, and were you, you were working at, at or on Amped at the time? Yes, mm -hmm. I was. And how did you introduce this concept to her, and how did she <laughs> interact with it? Um, you mean what? You mean when we first met, or when? Sorry, yeah, when, yeah. sorry I had it in my head. Um, no, I, no, I was working at Barclays at the time. Funny. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, when when we first met, and um, I I started at Amped uh, as we were dating. Okay. Um, how did she take it? I mean, she, she, was, she was always extremely supportive and she always knew that, um, you know, whatever I did, um, you know, I would, I would do it to, to the best of my ability. Um, so, you know, for her, uh, throughout my entire journey as an entrepreneur, she's been entirely supportive, you know. She's, she's at home waiting for me right now. I've been away here just 15 minutes away from her and, and you know, it's, it's agonizing, it's painful, but you know, that's, that's the kind of level of support uh, that, that I have for my wife. I'm sure we will be going through much, much, you know, much more turbulent and much rougher times in the future, but things like this, you know, uh, that separation, but that proximity uh, definitely prepares us for the, the, the challenges that, that you know, we, will, we know we will be facing uh, in the near future. Yeah. How, how have support structures helped you in your entrepreneurial journey in general? Um, it's been, you know, entrepreneurship, for me has been a roller coaster ride. And I'm not one for roller coasters. I'm not a sort of, I, I don't jump off cliffs. I don't, you know, a bungee jump. Um, so, so, so that support structure has kind of given me this bedrock of stability, which has kept me chugging along through, you know, the, the, the lowest lows and, and has, has, you know, empowered me to continue, uh, to empowered me to, 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 to do even more during the highest highs. Uh, so the support structure that my wife provides, my family provides, um, and now you know that unreasonable provides um, all of you over here is has been invaluable for me, and I'm sure it's it's equally as invaluable for countless of other entrepreneurs um, out there. Um, I, I I you know we were discussing over dinner that you know the the, the probability of you know you know people from you know, twelve different countries or twelve different with twelve different businesses all trying to impact the world coming together here in Hong Kong for nine days and, you know, and, and locking ourselves away in, in this lodge over here, the probability of that happening is absurdly low um, if it weren't for Unreasonable. So, yeah, uh, so thank you very much, Unreasonable, and thank you much for, all of you for, uh, for the support structure that you have. Uh, so you don't like roller coasters no. or bungee jumping. No. Would you say you're risk averse? Um, I think I think I like to. I don't like things to. I don't like to scare myself for the sake of staring, scaring myself. I don't watch horror movies. Um, I don't enjoy them. So it's just it's just sort of me as as an individual. Yeah. So, 
the journey of entrepreneurship is full of risk and yeah. it, like walk us through how you know how, how do you grapple with that I, I, I don't think entrepreneurship is in itself scary um, I think there are definitely uh, risks that need to be taken in your personal life and, and you know, risks that need uh, to be made uh, throughout the professional journey but I don't I don't find them as I don't find them scary as, as much as um, as much as things which you need to think through and things which you need to figure out uh, because um, you know seeing other entrepreneurs um, go through similar trials and tribulations and and surmounting those um, gives you sort of the confidence and the inspiration needed to, to think you know if they can do it you know maybe I can do it too yeah um, take us back to the moment just before amped was really real um, what uh, what really propelled you to, to dive in um, it was, you know, as an engineer, I, I, I grew up always thinking and always knowing for, that I, I'm intrinsically an engineer at heart uh, in terms of my mindset, in terms of the way I think, in terms of the way I engage with problems. Um, and that's sort of what really drives um, sort of me as, as, as an individual, which is to, to solve problems. And um, the thinking, you know, that ultimately resulted in AMP materializing was, you know, we saw a problem right in front of us and we had sort of a half-baked solution in very different form in the form of an electric motorcycle and we thought hey maybe what we are doing for electric motorcycles could be so much more meaningful for um, you know power security which was you know which was a challenge in lots of, and it and continues to be a challenge in lots of parts of the world yeah, yeah. so you have a solution in, or in electric motorcycles but you see another opportunity yeah. how did you kind of make the decision to, to take that jump um, it really sort of boiled down to us focusing on, you know, I think maybe some, some backstory is, is needed here for this. Um, you know, we started off as, as three guys living in Beijing. Uh, this was post-London for me, um, who, who loved electric scooters. And there are tons of electric scooters as, as you know, the simplest and most convenient form of mobility uh, in Beijing. And we wanted to go faster, we wanted to go further um, than what we could on our uh, scooters, but we just couldn't find anything out there uh, because for the most part these were you know, d built to a price and we wanted something more exhilarating. So we said, let's make our own electric motorcycle. And we did that. Um, and um, you know, we saw that you know, we made this incredible electric motorcycle that had 100 kilometers an hour of top speed, so about 60 miles an hour, about 120 kilometers of range. Um, and, and the biggest challenge for us was how do we get the, pro the performance of the electric motorcycle to be where we wanted it to be, and how do we get the price down uh, as far as we wanted it to go. And the challenge for us were the batteries. Um, we simply, at that point in time, couldn't find a supplier for somebody who could deliver us batteries that we wanted that were of our performance at our price point. Why would you want to supply us? So three guys working out of the shed in Beijing. So we started to develop our own batteries. Um, and along the way, you know, we realized that we, you know, we're getting pretty good at this. Um, our batteries were outspecking, you know, some of the things which you know, the suppliers w were, were providing us. Um, and, and we were doing it at a much, much lower cost. So um, it's, it's sort of something where we said, hey, we see this problem. What we're really good at are the batteries. We're not really, you know, great at making motorcycles. We're we're starting to get pretty good at batteries. Why don't we start focusing in and honing in on that and sharpening our skills on that, uh, so that we can potentially turn this into a business and solve this problem that we see right in front of us, which is you know power resilience in sort of developing parts of the world. Awesome. So you've had you know, tremendous success already, but I'm curious along the journey, what's been the most difficult thing that you've had to overcome? Uh, the, that's that's a tough one because we've we've had a lot of those. Um, I think I think it's it's seeing. I think for me, you know, we, we really do try and build up a sense of family and belonging um, among the team and Amped Energy, and it's it 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 sinks my heart when whenever someone decides you know it's time to go and it's time to move on uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and but but you know we continue we chug along one way or another um, because it's that greater sense of purpose and mission and, and to solve this problem um, and uh, you know we know that, that that there will be other people out there uh, that can 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 you know will continue to join us and, and contribute their skills.
towards solving this mission and hopefully the person that uh, that has decided to move on finds something that uh, means uh, more to him or is looking or her uh, or is looking has found something that is uh, sort of more in line with his or her aspirations and what he or she wants to achieve out of life yeah and what on the flip side of that what lights you up more than anything about the work you do every day um, problem solving uh, in developing a product or service using that uses technology in a way that uh, has not been used before you know for example very simple example how do you cool the batteries down effectively how do you prevent the batteries from exploding um, how do you ensure that you do all this at a very low cost point um, it's it's how do we solve these problems and how that addresses the customers problems that sort of excites me you know, whenever I you know show you know deliver a product uh, presentation to the customer and and, and you know, having the customer's eyes sort of light up and say, you know, where have you been all this while? You know, this, you know, this thing is, is awesome. That's sort of what really sort of continues uh, to drive me as an individual, and it drives the company's sense of purpose and mission uh, so much more. And it makes that sense of, you know, hey, you know, that sense of purpose so much more real for us whenever you see the customer realize this is the solution to all his or her problems. Ten minutes is so fast. That's you have so much depth to you, Brendan, um, Thank you so and I much. appreciate uh, everything you do. And you have a room full of allies behind you. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you.